Right, so some molybdenum paste. I'll start here. On the arm here that opens, moves the pallets. And the retard gear train. On, on the arm here where the main lever contacts this retard gear train and actually swings that arm across. It'll probably do for in there. On here, on the that little tail on the, the bird paw, on the tip, on the inside of the main lever and on the outside. Don't need to apply much, there's no great blobs there, it's, you just need a smear of it. And I'll fit the main lever and see if we can get the shutter to go. So first I'll make sure that that's cocked. It is. Drop this into place. Swing the B lever back so it's not holding things up. Swing that out. Swing that arm across. Now I can drop that down into position. Appears to be seated. Let's get it spring over the post. And we need our return spring for this arm, which is just tucked under here at the moment. Let's get that seated. That's better. Check that that moves. Yeah, that arm appears to move. So I'll put the shutter speed settings cam plate in place. And first I'll just run around some of these surfaces with a bit of molybdenum paste. There's a spot in here where the high speed spring engages. I'll just run some up there so that it moves as smoothly as it's likely to. Get this plate in place. That B lever always gets trapped underneath, so hook that out. That looks good, so that is in the B position at the moment. So we cock this. Shutter opens and closes correctly. This will be one second. That seemed to go smoothly enough. Around here somewhere that's, that's a tenth of a second. That sounds pretty good too. If we move this right around to the 500 of a second speed you'll see that this piece here engages this spring. Compressing it. So now that when we cock it, there's much more higher resistance because we're working against that extra spring. And the shutter should release at 500. And that seemed to be a bit reluctant to release. That's very slow to lift off. Suggests that one of the levers is slightly bent. And it's not quite lifting out down here correctly. Let me have a look at that again. Of course, under, with that 500th of a second speed spring engaged, it's under a lot more tension. It can mean that things are loaded up more than they normally would be. I think that's just not lifting far enough. It works fine. At one setting, that's at the is that the M or the X setting? Can't remember. At the X setting, it appears to work fine. That's when there's no resistance um, where the retard, the flash sync mechanism is effectively doing not not a hell of a lot. Oh no, it's made a liar of me. It's failed there too now. Okay, so that arm there doesn't appear to lift out far enough. Seems to be a bit sticky, a bit sluggish. Maybe slightly bent, might be rubbing. 
So let's get this cover off. I'll unhook that spring. That spring is sitting a bit funny, so it's okay. Unhook that spring, unhook the spring on the main lever, remove the main lever. And this is the lever I'm concerned with. It doesn't appear to move as freely as I would expect it to. I'm just checking to see if there's an obvious reason for that. It doesn't feel stiff. There were scuff marks down here on that plate and his arm has little marks on it like someone's been twisting at it with a pair of tweezers perhaps. It's got little munch marks in the edge. It's a bit hard to see. Let's remove that so I can see and I might remove the B lever for good measure. Yeah, there's definitely marks on here. Someone's changed the shape of that. Um, perhaps getting in with a pair of needle nose pliers or something and giving it a twist. So normally what would happen is that would be cocked. Let's get that cocked. That would be cocked. Yeah, it looks like it might be rubbing on this plate here at the top. That might be bent down a bit. There are scuff marks on the plate here where it's been rubbing, I think. It it's, may have been catching there. Just give that a little wipe of molybdenum under that surface. It doesn't feel rough, but it looks like something's been happening. That arm is certainly not dead flat. It's like it raises up here and then goes back down. And I know that there are marks here where somebody's bent it. The question is whether they've done it any harm or what the alignment's like. The alignment may be in incorrect. When that releases, this piece comes across, hits this, which of course lifts this end out of contact with the main lever here, because the end of this catches into where? Somewhere on here. There. So it may be that this is just not lifting far enough to clear that, which suggests that this arm is bent too far down this way. Alright. Well, let's see if I can encourage that to go back where I would like it to be. So what I want to do is move this end of the arm up closer to there. Alright. Well that certainly moved it, so let's find out if that's going to do the job. Put the B lever back. Yeah, that situation is certainly something that didn't arise by itself. Somebody bent that arm intentionally. Whether it achieved what they wanted to achieve or whether what bending it was entirely irrelevant is difficult to say. I'm going to get that, hook, that spring hooked over again that gave me so much grief before.
Right, let's put things back together. It's not uncommon for a fault to be evident in certain circumstances but not others. When the extra spring tension of the 500th of a second uh, spring is engaged, it can make it more difficult for a latch like that to um, do its job of swinging out of the way. There may be a little bit of roughness there. When the spring tension is relatively light, the action of moving that arm might be relatively easy. When the spring tension is very high, it might be difficult for that to swing out of the way. I suspect that's what we were striking there. Leave us seated, make sure that everything is where it should be. Let's get that spring tucked under there, it'll never go. Get that spring over its post. Get this spring on that arm. Cam speed settings, cam plate in place, make sure that's not tucked under there. That all looks good. What's it like on B? Good. What's it like on a 500th? Any change in the way it works. Certainly much harder to swing that across under the, so the 500th of a second speed is certainly doing everything it should do. That spring has got plenty of oomph. Let's try it on the other flash sync setting, the X. Yeah, no problem at all now. So that arm was just slightly bent so that it wasn't quite lifting far enough to reliably disengage from the main lever and allow the action to trigger. And that was strictly down to uh, a bend in that arm. Now obviously someone had been in there bending it. And the question is, what had they been doing? Why is this not sitting down flush? Something's not sitting down level here. That's because of that 500 per second spring was throwing it. Okay, let's check that everything is in position. Something has come adrift. Is it that spring there? Yeah, there's something odd about that. This spring here seems to be a little bit misshapen. And that lever certainly doesn't want to move smoothly. There's something really bunging that up. Let's have this main lever out and have another look. Now this spring, it's a funny shape, is it rubbing on something, is it tucked down at the end, it, it's got to be something odd like that. Let's 
be something like that. I'm just going to put a touch of uh, molybdenum paste on that spring. That arm sticks. It should not stick. It's catching on something. This arm is catching on something. I can't quite see what. Is it the underside of this lever? No. That's not catching on there. Oh, that's cursed. That's, um, that fault appears to be that's sticking there. What's it catching on? A mystery. Right, let's have the B lever off. Why is this sticking? Oh, is it running over the top of that arm? It was. Is that arm bent down? It should come up against that arm like that. It was running over the top of it. That arm was trapped underneath it, making the action of this quite stiff. Okay. That problem um, might arise if there was too much clearance under this arm. So it was able to lift over the top of that piece. Doesn't appear to be doing so now. I'll start back where we were. It's this is in the realm of subtle faults that you get with things that where it's very hard to track down exactly what's going on. Because the faults only appear sometimes and often the action is taking place underneath something else so you can't see what's happening, when it's happening. You can only tell from the effects. Okay. Shutter release back in place. Cock that action again. Put the main lever back in place. That's better. Swing the B lever out to allow that to drop down. Bring out the pallets lever at this end and the arm at that end. Check that's down, that's down. Get the spring over its post. Get the spring on this arm.
plastic that moves, it does. There they are from under there. 500th of a second speed spring is on the right side of the main lever. That all looks good. Swing out that B lever again. Works fine, and let's try it on the 500. It's right midway down the range. That's it. This time, I think we're good to go. Some fault you can get is if this B lever is sitting too high um, or is bent upwards, it can actually catch on this plate here. I don't think we've got that problem. Alright, so 500th of a second on X. Good. No hesitation. 500th of a second on M. No hesitation. That all looks very good. We fit the outer case back to the shutter, and the first thing to do here is to get the flash sink wire back in position. So I'll just pull that forward from there. It goes down into that hole in the bottom there, into that plastic flash connection block. That tiny little black plastic insulator drops down inside that hole. And then the screw. That little black screw has to go on there. Get that started. Now I've got another screwdriver here, which is the right size. It'll follow that screw down into the hole slightly. That's good. So that's in place. Now we've got the curved rack. It needs to drop down into this case. So I'll just run some molybdenum paste around the inside surface, top and bottom. Don't really need any on the teeth. I cock the shutter and drop this down into the track. Make sure it's behind the cocking arm on the shutter, like that. Line it up with the two screw holes here and here. And get them in place. The last piece of the puzzle is this. This is the detent for the aperture settings. The spacing is not even. The large, this greater gap between the settings is at the wide open end. So I slide that in there and then get it into that case. So there's our detent for our aperture settings. And that's all done. That shutter just needs to have the lenses clean, put back, and then put back onto the camera. Before I clean the lenses, I'm just going to clean the retaining ring, the shutter retaining ring. This is the front shim. Well, it's not a shim, it's just a dress washer, really, in the front of the shutter. And these are the shims from the back of the shutter. Two of those are paper. And there's a metal one there. You've got to be very gentle with the paper ones in particular. 
what I'm doing here is I'm wanting to remove any oil contamination from those shims. We don't want oil sweating its way out of these paper shims and working its way into the shutter. Those dirty marks of corrosion, it means there's some slight rust on that steel shim. That's of no, uh, no consequence. Normally I put the paper shims on to the shutter first. Or any paper shims onto the shutter first and then put the metal shim on last of all. And it makes it much easier to handle getting this onto the camera body and you're less likely to tear up your paper shims. Because that's very frustrating. So I'll just put the retainer ring on there for the moment. This is the dress ring that goes on the front and it just sits in here. And uh, it's, it's, it's hidden so well by the lens itself that it scarcely serves any purpose. On a Retina 1A camera with the f3.5 lens, the cover ring in that case is painted and um, it's visible. This one is invisible once the lens is screwed in. Right, so the lenses themselves, I've got to clean those. I've already given these a cursory clean, or at least the front one I've given a cursory clean. When I started off to find out how hazy it was and whether the haze cleaned. Now the rear one, I can see that there's, lot, there's haze on that inner surface. It's more obvious than the front one, but the front one I've already given that a bit of a clean. So hopefully they'll both clean up much the same. So domestic glass cleaner next. So first I will clean the front group a little more. The haze, the cleanable haze, is likely to be oils um, the glass cleaner will clean it away but it's not you know exceptionally energetic at doing that I can still see haze in there but it's by no means as prominent as it once was. Let's clean this front group, the front surface rather. the last bit of dust out of that and screw that front group into place in the shutter there's certainly some coating marks in there on that um, inner surface But no, there's nothing there that should cause a problem taking photos. The rear one. We'll start with this. Now the innermost surface, that's the one with the haze on it. And the question is, will it clean? It's better than it was. I'll clean the outside surface.
still see a little bit of haze there. I'm going to clean that once more. And here you rotate the um, cotton bud as you go so that you're always presenting a fresh surface to the glass. Just helps prevent you or prevent the likelihood of you picking up some fragment of grit and then grinding it into the surface. Which of course you certainly want to avoid. Well that, that looks better. You put that in place. Generally it's easier to judge the success of something like that when you're looking in from the outside with the dark shutter blades in behind it. I can certainly see marks on that innermost surface. Uh, coating type marks. But no, at like the front I don't think they're going to cause any problems at all. So that's good. That shutter is ready to go back on the camera body. What have we got here? Let's see. So here's our shutter. I'll just remove its retaining ring. Drop it into the body. Make sure it's engaged with the the little screw engages with the mount. Try cocking the shutter. Doesn't quite cock. Alright, so I'll adjust, move my timing by one tooth. Got the lens racked right out as far forward as I can get it. I'll lift that out. Right, can you see any of this? I'll lift this slightly forward. Move that one tooth. Put it back in, see what happens. Still doesn't cock, I'll do the same again. All I'm doing is changing the timing of the cocking action so to advance it. There was a change in activity there, but it's still not cocking correctly. One more tooth might do it. Not quite. You have to do this one tooth at a time. There we go. Cocks and fires. Now I'm making sure my shutter speed is set to a 500. Now that's where the maximum tension on the mechanism is placed. So if it cocks at a 500th, it'll cock at all the other speeds. Well, with that held there between finger and thumb, I'll drop the retaining ring in at the back of the camera. Take my spanner. See if I can get that engaged. And that retaining ring down. That's just finger tight at the moment. Check the action again. That seems good. I'll tighten it up. Okay. So there it is, that all appears to be good. So what problems do we have to deal with? Well it was partially disassembled when it came here. The film advance components from the top were loose. Um, the owner had, had problems winding the film back into the cassette and started looking in at the top of the camera for solutions. 
when he had to top off the camera I believe that the shutter release shaft probably fell out when he flipped the camera up and that little washer, that little spacing washer on the shutter release probably fell out when he reassembled everything that washer was loose it wasn't where it should have been it probably fell somewhere else in the mechanism that stopped the mechanism from working and at that stage he uh, perhaps wisely gave up and sent it to me so nothing was broken um, I think originally probably nothing ever was broken I think that the problem with the rewind was probably that he'd reached the end of the film that the arm was sticking out at some odd angle at the end of the film he pressed the button in, but it wouldn't stay clicked in exactly like that it wouldn't stay clicked in because the arm on here was holding that thing back he didn't probably realize didn't realize that there was a problem there he just thought the rewind didn't work when he went to rewind the film it didn't want to rewind so he unloaded his film in the darkroom the solution at that point, well, what he should have done was hold the rewind button in firmly with his finger, wind back the film a little bit into the cassette, then he could have completed the stroke of the advance, allowed this lever to come back to the rest position, which of course would stop it interfering with the button. He could have pressed in his rewind, it would have stayed pressed in, and he could have wound the film the rest of the way into the cartridge. So there was a probable sequence of events that caused the problem. Anything else of note? The shutter, well, the shutter certainly had a subtle problem there. It didn't look like it wanted to release correctly every time. Um, Certainly somebody had been at that at some stage, but then again the camera is 70 years old, so there's plenty of opportunity for people to get in and adjust things, um, whether for a good purpose or not. The lens was quite hazy. That, most of that haze is cleaned away. I'm quite happy with the look of that. That's quite a good example of the uh, Xenon lens for a Retina 2A camera. Oh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else of great note. Not a lot, I think. Generally speaking, it's um, quite a good example. I think it would probably serve him quite well as a user. The shutter certainly seems to work well. Everything's neat and tidy. Range finder's nice and clean, adjusted. Film advance has been completely stripped. I didn't find any problem with the film advance other than the probable probability that the stray spacer washer or shim had fallen into the mechanism when it was being had been reassembled and that had prevented the mechanism from working correctly at that stage. Apart from that, no, not an awful lot. It's quite a good one as these ones go. And this one can go back to its owner. So thanks for watching.